Hey everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages with an election-themed civic citizenship. Our topic today, referenda. What is a referenda? In fact, what you should be asking yourself is, what are they? The plural form of the Latin noun referendum, which is the practice of referring government proposals to citizens to vote on directly. In other words, someone proposes or suggests a change to how the government does things, and instead of elected officials making that decision as they do most of the time, they let the people make their will known during the election season. Referenda cut out the middlemen, bringing back direct democracy as the Greeks intended. This word refer, the root of referendum, literally means that to bring back. That being said, why am I even bringing referenda up? Because they're scary. I like the concept in theory, giving citizens a more active role to play in their government, but that is only good if everyone has an equal opportunity to participate in the system. The sad reality is that most referenda are bogged down in so much bunkum and gobbledygook that you practically need a college education to fully understand the things. Remember, you're in the United States, land of the lawyers, and this legal English, or legalese, it's designed to be comprehensive. Any detail left out, however minor, could be grounds for a court case, but it is also meant to keep the educated elite in power. Don't give up hope, though. Today, we're going to dissect a real-life referendum from this year's election here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll take you step by step and teach you the skills you'll need to translate whatever ballot legalese is thrown your way now and in the years to come. First, a very important piece of advice. Before you go vote, do your research ahead of time in the comfort of your home when you've got all the time in the world to read and understand what you're reading. A great website is ballotpedia.org's sample ballot lookup. I've got the address right here. Just enter your street, city, and state, your full address or email, not required, and it will provide you a list of all the candidates and referenda that will appear on your ballot. Doing this ahead of time, not right there in the vo voting booth, will save you a lot of frustration and potentially embarrassment. Here, as promised, I have one of three bonds up for decision this year. Allow me to read. Let's see if I can do this in one breath. Shall the order authorizing 102,732,000 of bonds plus interest to provide funds to pay the capital costs of constructing, reconstructing, enlarging, extending, and improving certain streets, including streets and roads constituting a part of the state highway system or otherwise the responsibility of the state, and including the cost of related studies, heat streetscape, and pedestrian improvements, relocation of utilities, plans, and design, Acquiring, constructing, reconstructing, widening, extending, paving, milling, resurfacing, grading, or improving streets, roads, intersections, parking lots, and pedestrians, and bicycle paths. Acquiring, constructing, reconstructing, or improving sidewalks, curbs, gutters, storm drainage, bridges, overpasses, underpasses, and grade crossings, and providing related landscaping, lighting, and traffic control signals and markers, and the acquisition of land and rights of way and land required thereof, and providing that additional taxes may be leveled in an amount sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on the bonds be approved. <laughs> I wasn't even close. There were lots of breaths right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one sentence. 145 words, perfectly grammatical. <laughs> now you see what I mean when I say scary, right? In order to even start breaking this down, we need to find the main subject and the main verb. If you're up for the challenge, pause the video now and try to figure it out yourself. For everyone else, I'll give you the answer, okay? The subject, the do-er, 
is the order, uh, as in a, the command or a law. To be a little more specific, the order authorizing $102,732,000 of bonds plus interest. So it is a change that would allow the government to spend a lot of money, plus even more in interest. Uh, I wonder what their rates are. Funny how they specify everything else except that. Um, what's my verb? Shall which doesn't tell us much because like it's past tense should, shall requires an infinitive, right? Shall, should. Um, believe it or not, the second half of this compound verb is way down at the very, very end. The passive be approved. <laughs> so, if we were to get rid of all the extras, the core of this monster sentence simply reads, shall this order be approved? Let's paraphrase. Should we approve this really expensive change? Oh, if only it were that simple, right? But as they say, the devil is in the details. Clearly, we still have a lot to do here. The next word, to, is short for in order to. So let's keep reading to find out what all that money is supposed to do. It doesn't take long reading this to figure out that we're looking at a really long, really complicated list. In these situations, commas alone just don't cut it. More powerful semicolons break the list into its main sections, while commas divide up the little details. Let's zoom in. Now, slow down and read with me, little by little. To pay the capital cost of. So this order will pay the capital main cost of what? Constructing. Building, right? Reconstructing. Building again? <laughs> They're already planning on breaking things. They're the same thing, so ignore the repetition. There's going to be a lot of it. Let's add it to our list. Enlarging, extending. These two are basically the same thing, making things bigger and improving. Notice, no Oxford commas, those monsters. What are they building, extending, and improving? Certain streets. Now, another comma, so they can tell us more about what makes these streets so special. Including streets and roads constituting a part of the state highway system or otherwise the responsibility of the state. Constitute is a fancy version of our good friend to be. Don't let it scare you. When you get rid of all the unnecessary extra, this part just reads streets that are the responsibility of the state. So not interstate highways or local roads. Streets of the state, state streets. I'm moving on and including the cost of, oh boy, more money, related studies. Okay, sure. You have to research before anything else. Streetscape and pedestrian improvements. I've never heard the word streetscape before, but it looks like landscape. So we want our roads to look pretty. We also want our streets to be pedestrian friendly so that people walking around trying to cross the street don't get run over, of course. So we're going to improve the roads for the cars on them, the people near them, and even the weird bystanders just looking at them. Relocation of utilities because if you dig up a gas or water line, you have to find a new home for it, obviously. Explosions on the freeway will not get you reelected. And finally, plans and designs. As an English teacher, I'm cringing on the inside because this is very poorly organized. The utilities relocation is part of planning and pedestrian streetscape improvement is designed, so why not put those first? You design, uh, you research design and then draw up plans. Am I right? But whatever. Don't let the language frustrate you. 
It's all quite simple when you break it down piece by piece. Let's add the section to our paraphrase from earlier. This order will pay the cost of improving state streets, should it be approved. Studying, designing, planning, and constructing, we can boil it all down into one word, improving. Let the lawyers object. We got to pause before because we came to a semicolon. Now, let's continue to the next part. This section's a little shorter and a little more straightforward. Pretend that that last part wasn't there, and let's keep reading. Okay, the order authorizing bonds to pay the capital costs of acquiring. Acquiring means getting, and how do you get the land to build new roads? You buy it. Constructing, reconstructing, those jokers again. Widening, extending, same old, same old, except this time we're making the streets wider as well as longer. About time. Paving, milling, resurfacing, grading. I'm going to be honest with you. Even I'm not sure what all of these words mean because I'm not a construction worker. Paving is adding cement and resurfacing is making old cement look new again. I know that much. I also know that you mill wheat to grind it into flour, but apparently it also has to do with adding a raised edge like on a coin. Thanks, dictionary.com. And grading obviously means something very different to me as a teacher than it does to road builders. Though I have heard of a steep grade, a, a slant or a slope, like on a hill. The thing is, though, it's okay that I don't know everything. I don't need to check the dictionary because, once again, this all comes down to the final word in this part of the list. Improving. This money is for improvements, plain and simple. They want to make the roads better, but it's still, it's still just the roads this time. Let's keep reading. Streets, roads, check, intersections, still part of the road system as far as I'm concerned. Parking lots, okay, that's a little different. I'll add it to my list. Pedestrian and bicycle paths, that too is a little off the beaten path. Pardon my pun. Pedestrian again means uh, walkers, so these are paths designed for people to walk or ride on, like in parks or along our North Carolina greenways. They're designed primarily for recreation, fun, not gritty rush hour traffic. Semicolon, finally, we can breathe again. Let's update our summary. This order will pay the cost of improving state streets, parking lots, and recreational paths. Should it be approved? Slowly but surely, we are getting close to the end. But let's go back to the beginning to remind us of our subject. The order authorizing bonds to pay the capital cost of acquiring, constructing, reconstructing, or improving. It seems even the lawyers are starting to get tired of all the extra words. This time, what are we improving? Sidewalks, curbs, which are the edge of the sidewalk, gutters, storm drainage. Again, basically the same thing, both important for preventing flooding. Bridges, overpasses, underpasses, really? Just bridges. Some you go over, some you go under. Grade crossings, and providing related landscaping, lighting, and traffic controls, signals, and markers. Those last three cover a lot of different methods for controlling cars on the road, like traffic lights and signs, so we can just group them together. There. So now we have this order will pay the cost of improving state streets, bridges, parking lots, recreational paths, lighting, landscaping, and signage, etc. Should it be approved? Clearly, I'm not including everything, and that's important. The whole point of this paraphrase is to prioritize the information so that you understand what's at stake here. If you were doing this, your sentence would probably look a little different, and that's perfectly fine. Paraphrase means in your own words. You want to keep your paraphrase short enough that you don't get lost in details, 
but at the same time, long enough that you don't lose anything important. A hundred million dollars is a lot. Are any of these things worth it to you? Maybe the roads you drive seem fine, but you get frustrated every time you go to the mall and there aren't enough parking spaces. Maybe you don't even own a car, but you love to ride your bike. Even though we don't think about them very often, lighting and signals are all about safety. So what are your priorities? That's what you need to consider when reading these referenda. All right, final stretch. The order authorizing bonds to pay the capital cost of the acquisition of land and rights of way in land required therefor. Once again, the government wants permission to buy land or lease land rights in order to expand and improve the road system. Therefore here means in exchange for, so land and money required in exchange for better streets. This may come as a shock to you, but with that relatively tiny uh, little section, our list is finally done. That tiny little comma does not make this obvious at all, but the final part here is actually a brand new adjective clause. The first one, starting with the present participle authorizing, thoroughly <laughs> ad nauseum, described everything that this order would allow the government to spend their money on. Now we come to providing that, a phrase that means on the condition or with the understanding or relying on the assumption that something else is true. The government can only spend its money if a certain condition is meant. Restarting from the beginning one last time, shall the order, providing that additional taxes may be levied in an amount sufficient to pay the principal of an interest of the bonds be approved? That condition is that the governor or mayor does not have to pay the hundred million dollars out of his or her own pocket. Where is the money coming from? Additional taxes may be levied. Of course, levied is an old fashioned term for collected or imposed. They'll spend the money happily, but only if we, the people, foot the bill. And don't forget all that lovely interest. So, one more time, let's update our final paraphrase or summary of this monstrous sentence. I tried to make it as efficient as possible. This order will pay the cost of expanding and improving state streets and other related expenses under the understanding that your taxes will pay for everything. Should it be approved? There you have it. A mere 30 words to replace 145. What I lost in detail, I made up for in comprehensibility, hopefully. It's a lot easier to understand, no? So, what could I possibly assign for homework this week? You have three guesses and the first two don't count. That's right. I challenge you to try this at home. Even if you can't vote this year, look up your local ballot and try to figure out what it says. Post your summary in the comments, or in this case, probably better, in an email, so I can give you some feedback on how you did and tips on how to do better next time. Unfortunately, legalese is all around us every day. It's the fine print on websites and packaging and in mortgage contracts. The only way to beat the system is to practice breaking down these long sentences so that you don't get tricked by a sneaky lawyer and maybe his politician friend. It's not an easy challenge, but I wish you all the luck. And remember, even if you fail, it's okay. You're bound to learn something useful. Thank you as always for watching and sorry for the headache. I'll probably have nightmares tonight after reading that paragraph, not to mention the other two just like it. Check out my website, apexlanguages.com, for other videos that might make you feel a little better, like last week's about silly nonsense words. Until we meet again, stay happy, healthy, and safe, and if you're able to, go vote.